So today what we're going to be doing is using Claude for AI SEO and basically running through some free workflows to basically rank your content and Kaz has joined me today. Hello, hello. And uh, so basically what we're going to do, this is the first time you're using Claude, isn't it? You made me sign up to it literally before, like an hour before this video, but is, do you know what? All of the, all of like the chat GPTs, the bar, they all do very similar things. So if a prompt works over here, it's going to work in Claude. Yeah, that's it. It'll be interesting to see what results we get out of Claude today. So I'm just going to log into it. And if no one's familiar with Claude, you can get it at Claude.ai. And it's basically like a free version of ChatGPT. Now, the cool thing about Claude is that it's completely free. So once we're signed in, which I'll do right now, you can get access for free and you get a, quite a high token count. Let's have a look at the token. In fact, we'll ask Claude once we log in to tell us. Do you know what? It did take me a couple seconds to actually log in. All right. So we're back in the game. This is what Claude looks like once you've logged in. So you can see you can actually upload texts directly into it. You get all your previous history of what you've tried. And then if you just want to create content, you can just go to start a new chat right here. So when you're creating content with Claude, what I usually like to do, like you were saying, you can take prompts that already work for you on ChatGPT and then plug them directly into to Claude as well. The only problem is that Claude isn't connected to the internet, but it's completely free. So it's like pros and cons. And then if we go to the content optimization section, let's say you just want to generate some title ideas with Claude. You can say, give me some blog ideas on say, link building specialist and front load the keyword. And from there, what it's going to do is give you some SEO titles that you can use for your blog, because you can see with the keyword front loaded. Yeah, that, that's something very similar that I would use on ChatGPT as well, like what you've just done. One thing that I will say is you can tell that it's not connected to the internet because it's coming up with 2023. So you just need to swap that out. Yeah, that's true. Make sure that you edit the dates before you publish it. Let's try plugging in a prompt like this, for example, create a comprehensive article about the keyword. I see like Rochester, let's say, and then we can ask it to format the headings, output as HTML markdown, and we'll hit enter and see what that comes back with. We can cre basically critique the content as well and see what it's like. One of the first things I don't like about it is like, it's actually coming back with code inside the markdown. Yeah, I, I, I was seeing that. I, I wonder why it's done that. So that, that makes no sense to me. And it seems so like it's doing it on every sentence as well. Yeah, this what we can do is just run it through a HTML previewer and then see what it's like. So wait for that to load. It comes back with quite a lot of content, to be fair. Normally with ChatGPT, you're going to get like 300 or 400 words back, right? Yeah, it's, it's a lot more for all the content, I will say. Let's plug this into the previewer whilst we're waiting for it to generate. So yeah, what it's doing is just, it's making every sentence on a new line, right? Yeah. I suppose that is one thing that ChatGPT does struggle with. I suppose Claude doesn't struggle with it. Maybe it takes it a little bit too far. It's either one or the other, isn't it? You can't get a good balance these days. Yeah, so you can see yeah. every single line is on a new sentence, which is good. Interestingly though, because, it's a bit dumb because what it's done is basically, it's a bit silly because it's, it's formatted the headings, right? So you got like your H3 there, but it's not formatted in HTML, which means that if you run this through a HTML previewer first, all the headings are going to be unformatted. Yeah, it's a little bit weird how it's set up. But it, it, do you know what? It's not terrible, but I think it, potentially the prompt could be improved a little bit more. I don't know why it would do the dev tags as actual dev tags though. That's the, that's the one weird part to it. The other thing I think is like the content itself is very fluffy, right? So if you look at the introduction in Rochester, getting top search engine rankings takes SEO expertise. It's like we literally mm. knew that before we Googled the topic. If you're yeah. running that through, say Google's helpful content up, Google's helpful content up guidelines, it would fail from sentence one pretty much, wouldn't it? Yeah. I, th I think potentially you might need to tweak the prompt a little bit because it seems like it's doing everything very literally like when you've said put everything on one line it literally has put everything on one line yeah you might have to say to it for example you could take the prompt that we did from here but then just 
insert an instruction that says mm. without any div or HTML code. Because actually, once we've done that, once we've asked it to rewrite without the div code, you can see that it's come back with something better here. Yeah. And actually, it's removed all the walls of text. So it's a lot nicer to read than, say, your average chat GPT content. I don't think that the content's terrible, personally. For, for, for free, obviously, you're going to need to play around with it and get like the, the perfect prompt to say. But it's, yeah, it, it, it obviously is a little bit fluffy. I, I would potentially try to give it certain parts of the actual helpful content like guidelines and seeing if you can visit, potentially try and relearn it based off of what good content is and what bad content is. Yeah, I think one of the things I would do as well is just, I would probably either write the introduction separately or create a completely new prompt to write the introduction. Because I think mm -hmm. that's probably the weakest part of the introduction, but it's also the most important part of the article, right? Yeah, definitely. So like when it rewrites it, for example, it, it writes it from first person perspective. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, and then it's included the keyword in the first line. That's better. It's not perfect, but yeah, it's getting yeah, it's, yeah. You're all you're almost there. You're probably like fifty percent of the way there. I think what you might be able to do as well is like you could probably upload you could download one of your articles that you really like and then upload it to Claude and say use this as as a sort of baseline, use the same style, etc. I think you could also give it the, so it just said you can upload a PDF. You could probably upload Google's quality rate or PDF to that. And you could probably get like a really good article from it. So something like this, you could download. Yep. And then upload directly into Claude and just say something like use the attached Google quality rate of guidelines and rewrite the article based on these guidelines, right? Yeah. See what it comes back with based on that. Doesn't like that. No, I was hoping that it's going to come back with the best article ever. I know. But... I was really, I thought that's genius doing that. I wonder why it's not. Do you know what? I, I've had this quite a few times, even with ChatGBT, it struggles to read the entire PDF. Let's see what happens if we say, can you read the attached PDF? No. Evans to Betsy. That's quite interesting, isn't it? So why would it give you the option to upload PDFs if you can't? I don't know. How many megabytes is the actual size? Oh, but it's nothing. It's size nothing. Wise. It's pretty small, yeah. I think we've broke Claude. We broke Claude in literally the space of two minutes. And you, you can upgrade. You do get an option for upgrading, which is 21 a month. But I'm not impressed so far, I've got to be honest. No, I'm not. I'll, I'll, I'll show, I'll show workflow or like what I've used it for. Um, do you know what I think might be better if you were going to use Claude is actually just using it inside perplexity in, in perplexity. Have you come across perplexity before? I have not. No. Oh, it's amazing. It's really good. But if you sign up to the pro package basically, mm -hmm. and you can actually cancel your, your yearly subscription as soon as you sign up so that you don't get charged and you can use it for free, but you can actually switch to Claude inside the AI model settings, right? So if you go to your settings over here, and then you go to perplexity, and you set the AI model as Claude, but you get a choice between Gemini, GPT-4, Experimental, etc. And then from there, that might be a better way to actually create content using perplexity uh, and Claude. And like I say, it doesn't cost anything because you can just cancel the trial. I actually talk about that in my video right here, this one. So let's try right. that. Let's try, we'll attach the quality rate of guidelines we talked about. We'll put the keyword here and we'll see if that works. One thing I like about Copilot as well is it communicates between you and the AI. So it looks at the question and then if it needs more clarification, it's going to tell you, right? So for example, please provide additional prompts or questions to reach the desired word count. You can say just skip. Right, okay. And then it's going to search the web as well. So it's using Claude, but Claude is not connected to the internet. So you're essentially layering up different AI models. Yeah, exactly. And one thing that you'll find with perplexity, if you use Claude inside it, is that it's going to give you references, right? So you can see all the sources here. Okay. Which is quite interesting. And then it's rewriting the content, but based on the PDF that we gave it, and it's not broken. Yeah. To be fair, it seems a lot. It's a lot smoother, right? Yeah. The, the intro is a lot better. 
I'll show you something else cool as well. Once this loads, you're going to like this Kazra, I promise you. Okay. I'm excited now. All right. All right. <clears throat> and the word count as well that's coming back is way higher, right? Yeah, definitely. It, it, it seems a lot more on point. Like that, this is what like an SEO agency would talk about, like Google Search Console, Google Analytics, etc. Yeah. So let's have a look. Can we check the word count on that? Let's have a look. Word counter plus. So it's come back with 500 words, and we could ask it to generate more if we wanted to. For example, you can just say write more content here or cover more FAQs. But additionally, this is a bit that I think you like, is that mm -hmm. it can search videos for you, and it can generate images for you as well for the content. Right. So, for example, if you search videos like this, you'll find relevant videos to the content. Right. Okay. From YouTube. That's quite cool. It's quite cool. Huh? And you can also generate images too. So, you can choose between a painting, a photograph, an illustration, and a diagram. Yeah. That's really it's pretty decent. That. Yeah. Additionally, you can share it with your team. So, if you click on share, you can make it shareable and then you can share it with your team so that they can use it too. That's quite cool. Yeah, I think this is a way better to use of Claude because if you use it this way, it's just going to break on you and get confused. But if you mm -hmm. use Perplexity this way, like I say, you can get it for free. I talk about it in this video. And, and basically, you sign up for a year and then cancel the subscription straight away. And that would work nicely. Yeah, that's so I think our biggest takeaway from that video or for, from this video is don't use Claude in conjunction with um but and then you yeah, the I'll, I'll go over what I've done. Um, mine's isn't anywhere near as advanced, but I, I reckon that this would work very well if you were to use it in perplexity. Basically, the very first prompt I gave it was give me 10 keywords based on search volume to do with SEO. And obviously, it's going to come back with all of these SEO, keyword research, backlinks, so on and so forth, right? So then yeah. I've just selected a random article. So give me a list of entities to do with link building that I should um, have on my page. So obviously link building, it's, it's a separate article. And then it's come back with all of these different entities. So guest posting, broken link building, giveaway contest, infographics, sponsorship, scholarship, skyscraper technique, link inserts, everything that we already know. And then I've just said to it, can you turn this into an article with subheadings? And it's come back with, it's probably like a five, anything from three to 500 word article. But again, like what we've just mentioned, the, the introduction, I don't think is that great. Like link building remains one of the most important ranking factors for SEO. How having other reputable sites link back to you, to your website. I just think that all of this can be a little bit more beefy um, when it comes to the actual article. And I think probably perplexity would be able to help you out with that. But from a from an entity point of view, I think that it's done quite a good job with the actual entities. I don't know what you think, because obviously we're talking about link building and it's come back with all the different types of link building that you can do. So like giveaways, infographics, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't think it's done that bad of a job. I just don't think it's that great for content creation. Yeah, I think you're right. I think for content creation, you probably need something like perplexity or copilot to work with it. And translate it a bit better but for yeah. actually entity extraction it seems to do a good job definitely yeah definitely and then you can plug that into the taxi afterwards can you awesome all right anything else before we go no that's it awesome all right if you want to get a free chat gpt seo course with all the prompts that i've talked about today feel free to get that link in the comments in the description and if you do want to book in a free seo strategy session where we can talk about how to get you more leads traffic and sales from seo Feel free to link in the comments in the description. Cheers, Kazra. Cheers. Thanks for having me on.